Hey guys, um, I thought today we'd just make a, a short video um, as a follow-up to the one we did yesterday. Uh, so yesterday I looked at a motherboard um, with a four-phase uh, VRM controller for the CPU and uh, I simulated a fault on one of the high side MOSFETs uh, to make it short circuit and uh, then we used the, the multimeter, a couple multimeters to see if we could trace which of the FETs on there were four phases so there were four high side FETs as to which one was actually short and it wasn't as easy as you might think because once we put the short circuit on one FET they all appeared to be short to the multimeter uh, but we found a way to do it using the SR meter and that worked well and I did comment at the end of that video it'd be interesting to see if that would work in the instance say, of a laptop motherboard where you can't remove the CPU uh, on the, the desktop motherboard we took the CPU out um, or for that matter on a graphics card uh, where you can't remove the GPU so this is a GTX 560 it's faulty it's got a, some uh, problem with the GPU on, on the memory uh, RAM phase in GPU this, this little uh, power supply up here but the uh, the main power supply is working uh, so it's four phases again yeah and um, Let's have a look at this, just see how it's connected up, and then we'll do the same thing, and we'll simulate a short circuit on one phase on this, and again, we'll use the multimeter, and we'll use the ESR meter to see if, once again, we can find the shorted phase. Okay, I'll just zoom the camera in. So, this one's quite interesting uh, for a couple of reasons before we even start. Uh, we have the, the 12 volts coming in here from the two connectors, yeah? And... Uh, we have four phases and as you can see there are 12 MOSFETs and there's three for each phase so each phase has one high side MOSFET and two low side MOSFETs that's the same as we found on, on the VRM on the motherboard yesterday um, so if we look from the uh, 12 volt connector yeah I'm actually on the 12 volts here now 12 volts coming in yeah and we want to find the high side MOSFET so the high side will have a connection somewhere going directly to, to, to that, yeah, to the 12 volts. So, I can just look around. Right there, I found. So, this is a high side MOSFET, it's connecting directly to 12 volts. And it looks like the other one's here upside down, effectively. Is it that one? Yeah, there it is. So, these two are high side MOSFETs, and you can see one's mounted upside down to the other. So, these two points here are connecting together yeah that's your 12 volts coming in and then from the other side one of them will go to one pair of low sides which i'm guessing are these two got a connection on it yeah so these are your two low side mosfets and then the other side of those will connect to ground yeah so these will connect together yeah, and they, they'll connect to ground if we find a ground point somewhere on the on the the thing. Yeah, just just one of these the ground. Yeah, so we can see we have a high side and then two low sides, and this high side is upside down. So these are the two low sides. Uh, what makes it interesting? Obviously, we've got the same here. So we've got we've got a high side and two low sides, uh, or this is the high side for these ones, and high side and two low sides. Yeah. So each set of three, like one, two, three, you get your high, low, low, will drive this coil, yeah? High, low, low, will drive this coil. And then we've got high, low, low on this coil, and high, low, low on this coil. That's your four phases. What you'll notice is that the 12 volts coming in here, to so these two, is not actually connecting to these. These two are connected together. And the reason being that these two actually go to the other 12 volt connector. So we've got two phases running from here and two phases running from here. So two things are interesting. I'm going to simulate a fault on one of these high sides. I'm going to short one of these, probably this one, yeah? And I want to see now, because we've got separate 12 volts coming in, I'm thinking that on these two phases, we won't see any short circuit yeah we'll know it's on one of these two but will we be able to determine which of the two it is so uh, without any more messing about i'll uh, just pause the video i'll solder a bit of wire on that mosfet and then we'll have a look 
Okay, so uh, we now have our short circuit high side MOSFET here. Yeah, I've, I've bridged this drain to source with a bit of wire. Um, so if we now look on V core, and the good place then is to look on all these coils, yeah? Because the, this end of the coil will connect between the junction of the high side and the two low side FETs on that phase. So let's have a look on these ones first. So I'm on the, the multimeter. Let's set the meter where you can where you can see it. Yeah, there you go. Um, so let's look at this one first. So we'll go from 12 volts coming in. Let me just find the one that's connected to this. Yeah, this one. So we go from 12 volts coming in to V core. And here we see 0 0.3 ohms, yeah? So it's like a short. And on this one, I'm actually, no, it's there, it's, it's settled at 0 0.3. It floated around a bit and it says to 0 0.3. So from 12 volts coming in, I actually see the short to the 0 0.3, of 0 0.3, yeah? Well, let's look on the other phases, the one where the 12 volt comes from the other connector, yeah? Once again, I see a short from 12 volts to V core. Get back onto it. There, yeah. And there, yeah. So I'm still seeing the short from 12 volts to V core on all four, even though these ones are being powered from the other connector, yeah. What happens if I look from the other connector? From the other connector, I now don't see a short, yeah. Because it's not connecting to this phase, it's connecting to this phase. Yeah? The two. So, this connector, I only see a short from 12 volts. In fact, I don't see a short from 12 volts on this connector. Yeah, I don't, yeah? But from this 12 volts connector, I see a short on all of them. Yeah? So that's what we've seen. Now, I mentioned this yesterday. Uh, we said, well, wh why does this happen, yeah? And we looked at this yesterday. So already, you can see, we have something quite interesting, yeah? We have some quite interesting measurements here. Um, so I did explain yesterday how the VRM circuit works, but you might not have seen that video. So uh, I'll just briefly do that again, and I'll try to explain to you clearly why you're seeing what you're seeing, yeah? What's causing it to make these sort of readings? Okay, so, th this is a, a VRM circuit. Uh, this has three phases, yeah? And uh, ours has four, but that, that's not really relevant. So you have three pairs of MOSFETs, each one driving a coil, yeah? And the controller circuit turns these MOSFETs on and off in sequence. So basically, if it starts with phase one, it'll turn this MOSFET on, which starts sending current into this coil to charge this capacitor. This is your V core, yeah? But the coil can't pass current instantly. It resists the change in current, and it uses the current. Instead of passing the, putting the current through to this capacitor to charge it, it uses the current to magnetize itself. So it magnetizes. The energy is going into the magnetic field. And once it's fully magnetized, it's just a piece of wire, yeah? So if you left this switched on for long enough, this would fully magnetise, and then this, this capacitor would charge to the same voltage input, voltage 12, yeah? Uh, the fact it's a low voltage capacitor, it just go pop, but <laughs> that's beside the point. Because the controller doesn't leave this switched on long enough. It has a sensor here, sensor resistor, so you can see what voltage there is, and when there's enough, it switches this back off again, yeah? It then switches this one on, and this one effectively shorts out this end of the coil to ground, yeah? And it now effectively discharges the magnetism, yeah? And once it's demagnetized the coil, if you left it switched on long enough, it would then discharge this capacitor as well, yeah? Uh, but before again, that can happen. Once this is demagnetized, it switches this off. While that's demagnetizing, it's already switched the next one on on the high side and started to magnetize this one and charge the capacitor. And so on. So it does them in turn. It, 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 magnet, it magnetizes the first one, and then it goes to the next one, and while it's on the next one, and the next one, it's demagnetizing the coil. So effectively, it's doing that for twice as long, if you like. So by the time it comes back to this one, it's fully demagnetized. It can start again. And that's how it runs in sequence, magnetizing and demagnetizing. Uh, so as I explained it yesterday, and again, 
this is where we've put a short circuit on one of the fets, yeah? So let's forget this bottom one for now. Let's just look at these two. This is our short circuit. And I'm taking my test meter, yeah? And I'm measuring from 12 volts in here to the coil here, yeah? And I've seen a short circuit because we've put a short circuit there. That piece of wire, it's short, yeah? That's why we see a short on the one where we've put a short. It's obvious, yeah? It's short. Why do we see a short when I put it here? Well, the reason being is that this point is connected to this point via these two coils. So from my 12 volts coming in through the short, through this coil, into vehicle, back out of vehicle, through this coil to this point, is effectively as near as damage as short circuit. Because the resistance of these coils might be like less than 0 0.1 of an ohm. Yeah, it might be into hundreds or thousands of an ohm. So your multimeter cannot see the difference between the short here, just a piece of wire, and the short here, which is a bit of wire, and two coils with a bit of wire wrapped around the magnetic material. So that's why you see a short there, yeah? Why do you see a short on the one? Imagine this is one of the ones that has on the other 12 volt connector, yeah? Why do we see a short from here to that one? Well, the reason's the same. Because you've got a piece of wire through the coil, into V-coil, back out of V-coil, through the coil to here. So from here to here, it's also a short. And imagine the fourth one is here. Yeah, it's exactly the same. That's why we see a short on all four, even though only two of them are connected to that connector, yeah? When we go to the 12 volts on the other connector, imagine that's this one, yeah? Now, from 12 volts, there's no short. This transistor is off. So we don't see anything here, yeah? And because there's no short here, nothing can come through these coils, so we can't see anything here or anything here. That's why, off the other connector, we don't see. And the same applies to the other one that's on the same connector. There's no short here, there's no circuit between the two, yeah? Imagine the other coils down here and the other fat, yeah? So that's why, from this 12 volts coming in, we see no shorts anywhere. And from this 12 volts coming in, we see a short everywhere. Uh, I hope I made that clear. And... Um, if not, you know, j just post in the comments. Um, you really need to understand these sort of circuits to get anywhere repairing, especially motherboards and graphics cards. So I hope that's clear. But if it's not clear, just post in the comments, say, hey, Rich, could you go through that again? Or I didn't quite get this bit. And I'll, I'll do it again, yeah? We'll, we'll make another video. A beginner's beginner's video for newbies, yeah? Okay. So that's why it's doing what it's doing. Now let's have a look to see if we can find the short. We know we can't find it with a multimeter because on every single coil from 12 volts it reads 0.3 ohms. This is yesterday I got around this by using an ESR meter. And I connect the ESR meter in the same way from the, from the 12 volts to the short, yeah? And then from the 12 volts to this one and the other ones. And the reason I'm using the ESR meter, these coils to your multimeter is just a short circuit, yeah? But the ESR meter sends a 100 kilohertz tone. It's meant for testing capacitors, so you can measure the conductance of a capacitor at high frequency. But an inductor is kind of opposite to a capacitor. Oops, camera fell over. The inductor's opposite. So the inductor actually blocks AC. So to the 100 kilohertz frequency, this coil will appear as a resistance, yeah? It'll appear as though it's a resistor. Probably a low value one, but it'll look like a resistor. So let's get the ESR meter. I'll take these little leads off it and we'll put the uh, big leads on it, yeah? Uh, we'll switch it on. Just initialising. Uh, this has three ranges. Uh, I'm on the uh, 1 to 10 ohm range. It has a 0 to 1 and a 10 to 100. But I'm guessing these inductors have probably got a resistance somewhere around 1 ohm or, or half an ohm. So let's look at that first. We'll, we'll try and zero the meter by connecting the leads together. It has a zero button, but because these leads are quite long, it'll say error zero. In. Let me just zoom in. You can actually see what it's saying. There you are. So I'm on manual range, so I can actually select the range with this button, yeah? And I've selected 1 to 10. You hold it in, yes. 10 to 100, 0 to 1. 1 to 10, let's find it back to it. Do 
didn't like uh, changing. They got the leads shorted together, I think. So I've shorted the leads together, yeah? I'm on 10 to 100 again. 1 to 10, eventually, yeah? And even with the leads shorting together, it's, it's, it's reading about 1.15. Okay? Which is not a problem. We, we know that about 1.15 is a short circuit, yeah? So let's have a look across these coils first, see if they have any sort of resistance. 1.28. So they have a little bit. Not only about 0.1 of an ohm, but they have a little bit, yeah? The question is now, can we actually find the short? Uh, and I'm not sure because this is a very, the, the GPU is a very low resistance. So that might affect us. Yeah, that might affect the readings. Um, also, there's lots of capacitors in the circuit, and they will conduct the 100 kilohertz from, from the ESR meter, so they may also affect the reading. But let's have a go. So we'll go from 12 volts, yeah, and we'll go to each coil and turn. That's reading 0.37, yeah. That's reading 0.37. The one that's got the short on, I'm expecting to read lower. And it does, 0.33. And this one, that's 0.37. 0.37, yeah. So we can see that the, sh the short circuit one, again, does read lower than the other ones, yeah? We can see it does read lower than the other ones. So, once again, we know which phase from the coil, we can soon figure out which one of these it's connected to, yeah? With, with just a normal multimeter. So once again, it did find the, the, the phase that has the short circuit high side which is again it's reading 0.4 now reading 0.4 now 0.35 yeah 33 it went to so there's not a huge difference on this but there is a difference yeah that's that was a 37 but this is actually going lower yeah, three three. Okay, guys, it wasn't quite as convincing as it was on the motherboard with the, with no CPU, uh, but it's definitely proved the point that the SR meter will find the the short circuit high side MOSFET, even where we have a GPU. That the, the resistance of the GPU to ground, by the way, if I just put my multimeter in here, uh, is very low. So the, the uh, from uh, anywhere on the the v core to ground is going to be very low if i connect the leads to the meter <laughs> of course i've put them into my esr meter and it's connect, connect uh, so from the actual v core to ground we'll read very low 0.9 ohms so 0.9 ohms is the resistance of the the gpu to ground which, which is quite normal yeah Okay, so there we go once again with the ESR meter, even with a very low resistance load, we can still see which is the short circuit high side MOSFET. Hope you enjoyed that one guys, see you soon now.